S3X, Sacred Energy Exchange. Once you learn that acronym, you can really understand why it's so important that you hold your S3X energy as sacred. You don't give it away cheaply and you're conscious about who you exchange it with. Let's dive into this concept. Hi, my name is Nikola Daz, and I help men master their S3X energy so you can become a powerhouse both in and outside the bedroom. Go to the links in the description below and take the free S3X transmutation guide to learn how to work with your S3X energy in a conscious way. The first letter in S3X is sacred, S, sacred. It's something that we no longer teach in this world. I know I grew up in hip hop culture and the modern culture, and there was never talk about sacredness to your, uh, to your, uh, your sexuality. Uh, I mean, it was kind of talked about a little bit when, because I, I went to Catholic school, but it was more like, if you masturbate, you are a sinner. It was kind of like more fear based than sacred. It was more like, don't do it until you get married. You know, it's like, okay, but everybody else is doing it and it's in the movies. And, you know, there's this thing called adult content online that looks really cool and hot and I want to try it. And, <laughs> and there's this and there's that. So it's like my natural urges are, are, are telling me that I want to do it. But yet I've got some priest who's not, because uh, 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 I grew up in the Catholic tradition. So priests... Uh, weren't supposed to be having S3X, but we all know that that uh, kind of went downhill. Not all of them, of course, but you know, look, it's no, it's no, it's no uh, uh, secret that the church and many religious organizations have suffered uh, with that uh, kind of thing. I was talking to a guy just yesterday who grew up, uh, you know, um, in an ISKCON temple and where there was pedophilia. And so you could see that this is happening in all religions, not just one. And that's why I think that all religions um, that don't talk about this openly, I think they're doing a big disservice actually to their congregations. And I think that they're taking the repression approach instead of the healthy expression approach. I think the more open you talk about things, then it doesn't become taboo and it doesn't create those environments in which you're like, oh, you know, I better express this some way. And it comes out in the most nastiest ways, like what we see right now going on with children. It's, uh, it's quite dark and it's a repression. It's a deep, dark repression that's looking to be expressed in a healthy way. So sacred, sometimes I heard messages like, you know, this is, uh, that's something that uh, two people that love each other do. And while those words were spoken, the example was not there, right? You know, the example, the living example, and this is why words don't really mean much unless action is backed with it because who you are speaks so loudly, I can't hear the words you're saying. Your actions reveal who you are, not your words. Your words uh, can be dressed up. We can use nice words. We can lie. We can, we can manipulate with our words, but our actions reveal. And so what are the actions of our society? What are the actions of our culture? Well, we got Cardi B with, uh, you know, WAP. Right. That's when in that was when in, you know, declared by Rolling Stone magazine as number one song in I think in 2020. So we're celebrating songs like that. We're celebrating, um, you know, promiscuous behavior. Uh, we now have adult uh, conventions. Right. You know, where you can meet your favorite adult star. Right. It's like so we're celebrating. We're making that the celebrity what do you think? Uh, I know I love in the Bhagavad Gita where um, Krishna says, as a great man does, common men follow. So what is a great man? Well, a great person in the context of what we're speaking about or what I'm the point I'm trying to convey is uh, like a celebrity. It's very questionable whether they're great or not from a spiritual perspective. But what 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 it, what he's saying there is that whoever we as a culture, as a society look up to, that is what we worship and that is what this culture will become. So if we are celebrating Cardi B, then that is what we're teaching the, our young women to become. 
If we are celebrating adult film stars, then that is what we are uh, that is what we are telling the culture to become. If what we are worshiping mean what we give our attention to. So if we're giving our attention to adult content and we're giving our attention to promiscuous behavior and we're paying people on OnlyFans to do crazy stuff so that we can watch, that is what we become. So while the words of sacredness are talked, it's time to embody sacredness. The reason that your S3X energy is sacred is because it is your very life force. It is the very thing that is giving you life. Isn't your life sacred? Would you just waste your own life? Many people intellectually will say, absolutely not, but I don't care what they say. Their actions speak louder than their words. You know how I can tell people don't find their life sacred anymore? They're willing to poison themselves consistently and constantly. Every day when you pick up uh, the cigarette or you pick up the drug or the drink. And yes, there's many reasons people do that. Trauma, escaping, you know, stress relief, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, many other reasons, but I'm challenging that I'm saying, no, deep down, you don't know who you are. You don't realize how sacred your life is. You've taken your life for granted. And why wouldn't you take your life for granted? Don't we take everything else for granted? I mean, we live essentially in one of the most richest times available in the in the the recent human history if you're watching this video you have some device to watch this video it means you have access techno to a technology that that no one has had access to in the in the past we are in a golden age to become prosperous to become healthy and wealthy we have knowledge at our fingertips that we've never had before and what are we doing with all of that well, 35% of the internet is estimated to be adult content. That's what we're doing with it. So you've been given tremendous amounts of opportunity in this age, and uh, you feel sorry for yourself because you don't have the latest iPhone. Or, oh, you know, I don't have the best purse. Or I guess it's only men watching this, but, you know, it's all the same, right? Or I don't have the nicest clothes or the best car, you know? I'm not satisfied with, with the, the life I have and, and my marriage and kids. I, I want 10 women now. And come on. And I know I'm not saying that I haven't, I've fallen into all of that too. So it's, it's, it's the human experience. But that's where we got to get right with life. Let's say, I've got this life. This life is important. It might not be important to you. It might not be important to my neighbor. It might, might, might not be important to somebody else, but it's important to me. <laughs> my life is important to me. Isn't your life important to you? Well, your S3X energy is your very life force. Recognize it and treat it sacred. And if you treat your energy sacred, everything else begins to fall in line because I promise what you'll treat next that's sacred is time. Time is an aspect of God. You'll treat time sacredly. If you treat time sacredly, you treat your attention sacredly. Once you start to treat your attention sacredly, man, there's no telling what you can accomplish because so many people give their attention away so cheaply. All right? A little gossip comes up. Ooh, tell me about that. Ooh, it gives me a little tingly feeling, a little feeling of being better or being in the know. You know, some little whatever, you know, so the news, breaking news. It's always breaking news. Oh, I got to know. So cheaply do we give our attention away. But as high value men, as men who do treat our life as sacred, we don't give our attention cheaply. And when you don't give your attention cheaply, you don't give your time cheaply. And guess what? It means you'll charge more for your time. You'll learn to develop money because money is an exchange of value. Uh, getting good at money actually has nothing to do with money in one sense. Once you start having money, then you have to steward that money well. And the more you learn about money and its practical uses, the better you'll do. But actually learning to develop, learning to, uh, to, to make money is actually about developing such a mindset that you understand that money is an exchange of value. So if you want more money in your life, treat 
yourself as valuable and make yourself more valuable. The better coach I've become, the better programs we put together, the better I've gotten at delivering the message, the more money I've made. Why? Because I'm more valuable to others. So you can develop skills and you can develop uh, wealth and you, uh, you develop wealth by developing skills or developing products or services in which you exchange. And when they're really good and people value them, they pay you for them. So this word sacredness, let's inject it back into our society. And now let's just say it by word. Let's demonstrate it by the way that we carry out our day. Now, the next letter in S3X, and I use the word three because, you know, we try as much to not get hit on the algorithm so that it diminishes us and our reach of this channel, uh, but it's the E, uh, uh, and that's uh, energy, uh, sacred energy. So energy, the world is mad after energy. Right, we're going green, <laughs> right? You know, as uh, some politicians say, or oil, or nuclear, or you know, uh, gas, or whatever. I don't know. I'm not an energy expert. Not that kind of energy, anyways. All kinds of energy, solar, you know, wind. <laughs> right? <laughs> we're mad after energy because energy is power. So we're mad after power. Power means the ability to do. So energy gives us the ability to do. Energy is lighting these lights and this microphone to allow me to record this and deliver it to you. You're using some energy to watch and listen to this. We're using energy to light homes and cities and cars and airplanes. And Elon Musk is using energy to send rockets to wherever the heck he's sending his rockets and all kinds of stuff. And we're fighting wars over energy. We may think we're spreading freedom or democracy or philosophy. Now, we're fighting over oil. We're fighting over energy. We're fighting over resources. Money is a type of energy. Money gives people the ability to do. When you have money, you could pay people to do things. You can uh, 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 buy things. You can do things. So energy equals power, and power means the ability to do. But why aren't we mad after cultivating energy within us? Because we live in a world that has told us your power is outside of you. But I'm here to tell you it's not. Your power is within you. And it comes from your S3X energy. And the more you learn to cultivate it and the more you treat it as sacred and the more you only give it consciously, the more power you have. And the last letter is X. And I know this is not spelt right, but phonetically it's exchange. Meaning when you engage in S3X activity with somebody, even just online or texting or all that, you are exchanging energy with them. You are, first of all, releasing oxytocin, which is a bonding substance. So you're bonding. S3X energy is a bonding energy. It's an expansive energy. So you're expanding that exchange with them. And you're taking on their energy. So if you're having S3X and you're messing around with someone who's depressed or who's full of drugs and alcohol or somebody who has low integrity, then that's also you. And so you've got to clean up yourself. And here's something you'll notice when you clean up yourself. And I've done this with so many guys in my own journey. What's really interesting is that you clean yourself up first physically. So good foods, a good, uh, a good exercise. Uh, none of the, you know, staying away from the processed stuff as much as you can, staying away from the drugs and the alcohol, especially. Those are just, just, just killers of consciousness. Alcohol is like the killer of consciousness. Uh, my one of my friends, a uh, student who's a Muslim, he was telling me about how in his, uh, you know, his his teachers in his Islam talks about how alcohol uh, is designed to keep people enslaved. It's designed to reduce you down to nothing, to, to animal level consciousness, so you can be easily controlled and manipulated. And guys, you know this, right? You go to the bar and what do you want to do? Yeah, here, have another drink, have another. You try to get the girl drunk, right? So she loses consciousness. She says, oh, I'm loose. It's not loose. She's unconscious. That's what that is. 
That's right. When you go into, uh, I went into the bar the other day. I didn't have any drink. I had a pineapple juice. And um, as soon as I walked in there, I just, oh, I just felt it. I'm like, I don't like this place. It's just dark. It's so dark. It's alcohol everywhere. You know, this was the middle of the day and there was like two guys sitting at the bar just drinking. It kind of reminded me of like Homer Simpson, you know, <laughs> um, uh, Moe's Tavern, if you know the Simpsons. And it's just like these kind of like depressed dudes that are like fat and just like sitting in there drinking. It's kind of what it reminded me of. And it just, the, the whole energy of it just felt dense. I was like, I'd rather be out in the forest right now, camping or something like that, or like, you know, with my family in a loving environment or just, uh, you know, at church or temple or something. But anyways, we went there and we had some lunch and it was fine. You know, again, I had a pineapple juice. My friend had a beer and uh, I just couldn't wait to get out of there. And, and then that night, I remember I felt kind of sick. I was like, oh, I don't feel right. And it's because I'm quite sensitive. See, unfortunately, or fortunately, however you look at it, the cleaner I am, it, like the more sensitive I am to things. And so just some environments, I just can't be in there anymore. And that's my point is that, see, I can't exchange my energy with that. When I was smoking lots of weed and watching porn and doing all that stuff, the things that I would the people that I'd be willing to allow into my sphere was of a much different quality. And, uh, and the activities that I wanted to engage in was a much different quality than who I am you know, right now. And so we're not just exchanging our energy with other people, but we're exchanging our energy with the environment we're in. And the more tune, attuned you get to that, then the more you realize, oh, okay, I, I only want to put myself into environments that feel good and that there's a loving exchange there. And, you know, it's really simple. Uh, it's like, you know, it's basic biology in a way. You're a cell. If you just look at yourself as a cell, uh, if you are full of toxins and negative, you're negatively charged. So you've got negative thoughts, negative attitude, and, and you're doing things that put you in an acidic state. So you're negative. So drugs, alcohol, crappy foods, uh, lots of caffeine, that's all putting you into an acidic state. Then therefore, you are going to be attracted because law of attraction states you don't attract what you want. Law of attraction isn't a mental thing. It's it's a, it's a it's a it's a universal principle or law, and it's not just a human thing. It's it's working all across the universe. It's the way the universe attracts and clusters things together. Uh, when when what you're going to attract is what you are. So if you are full of negative stuff. You're going to attract, as much as you try hard and work hard, you're going to attract negative stuff. You'll only be able to attract, um, you know, a certain amount of money in your life. I remember uh, a success trainer that I learned from years and years ago. He was giving this massive presentation and he talked about actually people who smoke will never be able to attract a certain amount of wealth. And because he was saying your vibration will always keep you underneath people who are clean and clean people have the most money in the world and they're doing business at higher levels and they will not be attracted to you. So it's really interesting how it affects all areas of our life. So you have to be conscious, sacred energy exchange. Who are you exchanging your energy with? Don't give away your S3X energy cheaply. Don't exchange your energy with things and people that don't appreciate or love you or respect you. Don't go into environments that diminish your energy. Be conscious. Treat yourself sacred. And if you live that one message of sacredness, you will notice that your life continues to improve and get better and the months and years ahead of you will continue to bring you blessings and abundance and peace and joy and good friendships and good relationships. But it's tough because you might go through a period of time where you're doing that, you're cleaning up, and you won't see it right away. 
because you're getting yourself out of the environment. It's kind of like if you're taking a shower and you're really filled with a lot of dirt, well, you know, you, you, you don't get clean right away. You have to go through the process of showering. You have to go through the process of, you know, cleaning yourself up, of, of giving up those bad habits. And that's where the real work is. And that's the toughest time because you also generally feel the loneliest there because you'll feel like, well, I'm putting in all this effort. I'm not necessarily seeing the result. I know that this is the right choice. I know this is where I need to go, but I'm not necessarily seeing the result. And I'm not necessarily, you know, kind of leaving the old world. You're kind of half in, half out. And that's where faith comes in, where you have to have tremendous amounts of faith. And that's also where mentorship and coaching comes in. You know, I'm mentoring many, many men across the planet right now, and I see them going through that time. And if it wasn't for the coaching, if it wasn't for being involved in our support groups, if it wasn't having uh, coaching calls regularly, if it wasn't for uh, learning the information and learning how to practically apply these principles in their life, they would easily go back to the old ways. Even though they don't like the old ways, it's comfortable. It's kind of like getting back into bed. I really should get up and get to work, but oh, it's so comfortable, even though I don't want to be in bed. That's kind of what drugs and alcohol are. That's what, uh, you know, uh, masturbation essentially is. It's kind of like a comfort just to like relieve some discomfort. And that's why it's so important that you get support and help along the way. I know if it wasn't for great mentors in my life and great coaches and teachers that have poured into me, I wouldn't uh, have the strength to be where I'm at today or building this business and doing what I'm doing today. It's because of those. I stand on the shoulders of giants. I stand uh, as a representative of all my teachers. And so you got to find good teachers and good mentors and you got to find good people. And that often means you have to invest. I did. I did. I couldn't find it just immediately. I had to invest. And that investment wasn't just, oh, I'm paying someone. It was really an investment into myself. I'm worth it. So you have to ask yourself, are you worth it? Are you ready to invest your time, money, and energy into your life? Do you see your life is sacred because if you do you'll treat it that way i hope this video resonated i assume it did if not you probably wouldn't still be watching if you're still watching i appreciate you so much make sure you hit the like button you subscribe and also go jump on my calendar i'd love to connect with you have a conversation i could take you through the different options and programs that we have see what's a right fit for you and if it's not a right fit for you i'll tell you or you'll know and maybe i can refer you to someone of what you need you know, we've got a whole network of guys. We've got a whole community around the world of different experts helping men in different ways. I'm happy to be of service to you. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video.